Hey guys, uh, it's Paul. Welcome to my Let's Play about tarot. So there's a tarot deck in here. This is a veil or a tarot cloth. Um, this is the deck. It's the Robin Wood deck. It's my favorite deck. So. Okay, so um, what we do to make this, this is a Celtic cross. So basically what we do to make it is we put down a card here and then we cross it with another card and I'll talk about all these positions um, you know as they come up and you put a card beneath it and, so, and we'll talk about how the orientation matters too um, and then this is what is behind this is what might come to be or come into being or is above this is which is ahead. Um, and you don't want to flip these. You want to, when you bring them out of the deck, you want to put them down like this. So that's me. This is the social environment. Um, this is the hopes and fears. And this is the likeliest outcome. So this is the Celtic cross. The first card is the one underneath, and this is a big one. This is a major arcana, the world. This is number 21. You see this is a dancing woman. Um, and this is the this is kind of the finality of a spiritual journey. The major arcana are all about sort of the journey from innocence to experience. And this is this is experience. This is knowing the world, and that's that's my present situation. Um it's having completed a major life cycle, come into a new one, closure, achievement, accomplishment, and the breadth of possibilities. Maturity. I kind of agree. <laughs> Which is strange. So the second card is the influence or the um, the conflict. And this guy is the Hierophant. He is a priest. He is serious. He is hidebound. Um, yeah, he's, he's really something, he's not good news in general, um, represents captivity, servitude, ritual, a desire to hold on to old thoughts and ways, even though they're no longer useful, and to me this guy really, and I get into too much information here, but he really symbolizes the over-adaptation to trauma that is no longer necessary. So this is this is me in the world. This is where I am. This and this is what I've learned. This is how I have adapted in the past. And they are at cross purposes. And um, we're gonna reveal more of this, but basically they're the only ar major arcana on the board. So the tarot deck is divided into major and minor arcana. Um, the 22 cards of the Major Arcana are sort of your, your personal spiritual journey. Um, so really the major point um, in a huge way, because I'm not going to turn over any other Major Arcana cards, that's just not how the deal went on this Celtic cross. Um, the whole story is here. You know, the world and embracing everything about it, and the Hierophant. Okay, so position three is down below. Traditionally, that is what is beneath me. This is the Page of Cups, but he came out reversed. Non-activity. So this would be activity, but this is kind of non-activity. It's being lulled to death. Um, it's kind of a deep and intense standstill. And this beneath sort of the unconscious influence or the basis of my life right now is... Uh, stagnation um, and in this card it counsels to be open to you know, pleasure connection nurturing and support which is pretty much the message of this entire spread as you'll see okay so position four is the nine of pentacles this position is the position that this card is in is that which is behind me you can see so we're going from the past to kind of the future um, what might be coming right up ahead around the bend. Um, and the Nine of Pentacles is just 
you know, realizing the fruits of your labor. It's taking a lot of pleasure. Uh, it's saying, you know, hey, I have organized, and especially in this, this past position, I have organized and ordered my life very well. And you have a result which is a great gain, which I, of course, have had. Okay, so we're going to position five, which is the Eight of Cups, um, which is sort of screw all this. This guy's leaving behind the eight of, these Eight Cups, um, but it's reversed again. So, and this top part is sort of what's consciously happening in my mind, or you could think of it as the, an alternate or possible future. And what is the Eight of Cups reverse? So it's what might come into being, and, and this is sort of refusing to leave a situation behind. This, behind. this guy is leaving a situation behind, but sort of I'm, in this sense, really refusing to do what this guy is doing, refusing to leave a situation behind. Um, and this guy is, he's, he's kind of a monk too, so you see he's, he's really on his way with a wand in his hand and he's got these little feathers here, he's some kind of a shaman, or she actually, there's no reason it couldn't be she, so let's say she, she's, um, you know, she's leaving these cups behind, I, I'm not leaving them behind. I'm saying, and there's some hedonism maybe here, and I, I, you know, hedonism is a word that comes up in a lot of interpretations of Eight of Cups Reverse, and I'm totally, completely willing to agree with that. And, and you want to compare what's above and what's below to each other. So, so what do we see? We see both basic and superficial stagnation. There's a lot of stasis. Um, there's not leaving things behind. There's stagnation. Okay, so what's ahead? A fight. And a fight from good ground. This is stand your ground. Look at this guy. He's in his tartan. I'm not into, not necessarily into the Celtic, the ultra Celticness of this, and he's super blondy, but, you know, he's on steady ground here. So what is this saying? What is this seven of, seven of roots saying? This is in the future, so this is the recent past. This is this is kind of what's right around the corner, um, or the the approaching influence. Um, yeah, the approaching influence is ferocity in a fight, and it's sort of strange to say that about myself, but um, it's standing my ground. Huge questions of loyalty to myself, loyalty to some cause, you know, loyalty to what I'm doing. And this is an encouragement, again, to strength and action. So the coming challenge is to be as organized about representing myself and projecting strength as I have previously been about building strength. So this is about building strength and enjoying it. Right, and now this is using the resources and engaging and doing something with them. So one thing about this that really struck me is this sort of high ground. So he's dealing with six other people that he's fighting, and he's on high ground. So when you fight, you want to fight in the right place. You want to fight from a position of strength. So it's important to choose battles on steady ground. And in this case, the steady ground has, has got to be spiritual and social. So I've got to choose fights that I believe in and that I can win, you know, that are, that are sort of in my wheelhouse. So we're transitioning from harvest to struggle, conflict, war. Okay. So now we're going to position seven. This is me. And wouldn't you know it? This is the position of self, and the knight of pentacles reversed is fear. This guy needs to be encouraged. If you believe in astrology, this is a male Virgo in a bad situation. I'm not sure I do, but it's the repression of desire for greater advancement, um, and it's a counsel to look for a new start, to look for the true source of your strength. Especially with his upright seven roots right here, um, 
There's a lot about discerning my own convictions and aligning with them and acting in accordance with them, right? So this Hierophant, he's not about me. He's not about where I'm at. Okay, um, here's the environment, the social milieu, and it is, oh man, look at this beautiful Ace of Cups, the Cup of Love, the Cup of Conviviality being dumped out. Hey, yeah. So what's going on? Um, the Ace of Cups reverse is false love, it's fulfillment delayed, it's clouded joy, it's sterility. And the theme here of stagnation is very strong. Stephanie from Facebook commented that this could indicate a lack of perceived emotional support from others. So maybe I, I think I'm not being supported by others, or maybe I actually have a social mix that's not conducive to emotional expression. Um, wanting to get to emotional expression, but it's being cut off or restricted. Um, and I'm going to go with all of that. All of that is true. All of that is absolutely true. Um, you know, what does conviviality look like? And it looks like being able to express yourself emotionally. And that's the social milieu I'm in. And that's the social environment. So if you combine these two, it's like, well, holy crap, I need encouragement, but boy, am I not getting it. So then this guy is five pentacles, hopes and fears. Um, you know, the fear might be that I'm experiencing a period of deep spiritual need and I'm not getting it. Or maybe I just need counseling about traumatic adaptation. So what it, what is this? This is basically sort of being out in the cold. But it can also be a period of rest, of rehabilitation. And then this is you know, the idea that you're misusing rest, that um, some period of rest is, is being overused. You're overstaying your welcome in a period of rest, which is, again, um, this, is, this is kind of a counsel against against laziness or complacency. So both of these, you know, I'm fearing that I'm misusing sort of, and there's a whole bunch of stasis in the rest of the spread, but I'm fearing that I'm misusing rest. And then this is saying, yeah, don't misuse, you use rest, don't do it. So, and again, this is, so then here is, is this like, what am I fearing? I'm fearing a collapse of the kind that I have had before in my life. And, you know, is this a survival situation? Well, maybe not. But I fear it is. Why? This guy tells me so. The old ways, the ritual. Okay, and um, position 10, this is the likeliest outcome. This is the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is waiting to see. It's a revelation. It's um, seeing fruit ripen. Stephanie from Facebook comments that it's frustrating to see it in the outcome position because it's, it's, it's essentially a card about waiting to see and waiting, waiting to see for more, you know, waiting to, to understand. And there's more prosperity here. So the Pentacles are all about prosperity or can be about it. And this guy's clearly, you know, got some seeds planted. And... It's, it seems there's a sense here that there's some things, seeds that were planted long ago that still have yet to sprout. And that's, that's really true. That's very resonant with me. Um, I've done a lot of work to sort of squirrel away resources. Um, spiritual, social. And the final thoughts, I think, you know, comparing this position 10 to this position 5 is, you know, okay, so... I kind of prefer waiting and seeing. And that this, you know, and as I, just as I do this video, I think that this is almost also kind of like waiting and seeing too much. Right? So being, this is a possible alternate future. This is the likeliest future. So this is, this is really, you know, where I could go. And this guy looks better off. I mean, I'd rather, I guess I'd rather choose this, but then, you know, if I think about it, like, what's the Hierophant saying? The Hierophant says, you know, be conservative, do what you've always done. 
And so I think about this and I think about like hedonism and all of the counsel to sort of like look at what's pleasurable to me um, and really be clear about that and look at the support around me and whether it is in fact there or not. Um, so maybe I need to do more to go for this. This has been lovely and uh, my first Let's Play and first video on YouTube about the tarot. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.